Hello Internet, I'm Cold Man, and today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons over on Patreon. I set a Patreon goal of about $30 for a Patreon poll, which we held recently, and the winner of that poll, by quite a wide margin, was Tiptoes. I am so excited to get to talk about this. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew, Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew gonna drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Tiptoes. I think right up top we need to address how we refer to the people in the movie. Um, I have been told the term midget is derogatory. However, if I were one of these people, I would not want to be called a little person or a dwarf. Um even though those seem to be the preferred terms. Now, in this movie, they refer to them as little people. That is the preferred term by this movie. So, apologies if that offends you. That's the term I'm going to use. In 1996, Matthew Bright wrote and directed Freeway, an absolutely underrated gem of a movie. He would go on to make a mediocre sequel, a Ted Bundy movie I haven't seen, before writing and directing Tiptoes. And that was enough to kill his career. R.I.P. in peace, my dude. So if you know anything about this movie, you're probably aware it stars Gary Oldman playing a little person by walking around on his knees. This, in particular, has drawn people's attention to the film, especially considering how many actual little people appear in this film. Notably, Peter Dinklage in a fairly major role. And I'm here to tell you, even if they had cast a little person, this would still be one of the most horrible, baffling, and hilarious movies I've ever seen. It just makes it way more baffling and way more hilarious that they didn't. Other noteworthy names are Matthew McConaughey, Kate Beckinsale, Little Nicky Star, Patricia Arquette, and nearly every little person in Hollywood. And before we begin, I would like to once again thank my patrons on Patreon, and specifically shout out Julian Casey, my latest $10 patron. Uh, at $10, I will thank you personally in a video. So thank you, Julian, for your contributions. And with that, let's take a look at Tiptoes. We open on Matthew McConaughey as Steve, telling his girlfriend Carol he has to be with his family. And then... Oh. Dinklage and Oldman just pissing on the side of the road. Wonderful. As luck would have it, a bus stops and kicks Patricia Arquette off right next to them, so she's able to hitch a ride. Turns out Steve and Rolf, that's uh, Oldman's character, are brothers who are meeting their parents at a convention for little people. And yes, the dad is the backwards talk guy from Twin Peaks. Oldman and Dinklage arrive, and it's here we figure out Dinklage's character is named Maurice, and that he speaks with an outrageous French accent. Imported cherry flavored morphine syrup from France and cognac. Oh. oh, I just wish I had a fucking crepe. Why would you make an actor with such a great voice spend all movie going, Ho ho ho, I am Le French, ho ho, can't you tell by my outrageous accent? It's like they were deliberately trying to make this movie suck. It's funny how Oldman barely moves when he's on screen. They clearly hired a little person body double to play him when he's facing away from the camera, and it's really obvious. Like, setting aside the fact that getting a full-grown man to play a little person is already kind of offensive to little people, it's also just a bad idea logistically. Uh, Oldman never moves in a way that seems natural. He seems stuck in place a lot of the movie, and when he does move, it just looks wrong. 
and it is highlighted by the fact that there are all these real little people around him moving in ways he can't possibly. And it looks like Steve's living in the same loft from The Room, complete with its shitty, overdramatic music. And it wouldn't be a McConaughey film if he didn't get shirtless. Like, he's young enough in this movie for it to work, but he's still doing it! Matthew, you are as old as my dad! And it turns out Carol might be pregnant, and Steve is a little upset because it was unplanned and they're not married. And those are the only two reasons he's upset. Rolf, Maurice, and Patricia Arquette decide to get a motel room, but they gotta share. One lady, two little children... I'll make a special price for you. These are 95 not my bucks. Children. I love how they just ignore Patricia Arquette's line there. In the middle of the night, Maurice starts having medical issues, which I'm given to understand are common among little people, but he refuses to seek medical care, so Ralph has to find a place to stay for the night. He visits an old friend, but her boyfriend shows up and gets upset at him. So he holds Ralph down and hits the floor next to him. Oh god, lady, you, you can't put a stick you peed on over your coffee. Bad idea. But yeah, Carol is confirmed preggers. And Rolf just showed up looking for a place to stay. Guy, try to kill me. I don't think he was trying that hard, buddy. He missed twice. Anyways, here we begin to explore the idea that Steve is ashamed of being in a family of little people, as he hasn't told Carol about it. On the other hand, Carol lets this guy she's never met or heard of stay alone in her house without even confirming that he's actually Steve's brother? Meanwhile, Maurice and Patricia get in a fight with the hotel owner because they stayed too late and the owner thinks Patricia is a prostitute. I, I think these characters are comic relief, but their story so rarely intersects with the main characters, and they are so tonally dissonant from what the rest of the movie is doing, it's like they belong to a different movie. Like, at what point do you decide you want your quote-unquote serious romantic drama about the struggles of little people to include Peter Dinklage packing heat while Patricia Arquette beats a man with her shoe. Carol goes out to visit Steve, who's running a fireman training camp, and what the fuck is she wearing? Like, before it was reasonable, it's, it's pajamas, but why would she leave the house in that? And why would she put a nightcap on just to leave the house? And man, it's not the best performances, but McConaughey and Beckinsale are giving something to this performance that the awful dialogue is just absolutely ruining. I'm also passing judgment on you, Carol. Hey, I'm not passing judgment on you, okay? I'm just trying to understand. But it's not as bad as what Dinklage and Arquette are left to work with. Then he turned really evil. There's a truck driver, and those guys are all on crank, and there's this, you know, transsexual prostitutes. And... Excuse me, what? Like, like, first off. This movie is weird enough without you bringing that shit into it. But secondarily, you can't spend all this time being like, oh, you gotta be respectful of little people and re refer to them with the correct terms, no, none of this midget stuff, and then just turn around and drop transsexual prostitute on us. Like, come on, Patricia, your sister is trans. Granted, she didn't come out till a year after this movie, but still, it's out of nowhere, and it's just like, weirdly rude to trans people and truck drivers all right yeah i'm a, I, i'm a motherfucker i'm a dick too yeah i'm a fuck wad i'm a fucking fart congratulations you got oscar winning actor gary oldman to say i'm a fucking fart and he gets on the couch in the most awkward way to avoid revealing wait that's not Gary Oldman. They, they didn't even give him a fake mustache. Come on. But it still looks better than this. It's super obvious those legs are fake and half of Gary Oldman's body is stuffed in that couch. Also, I know I already complained about Carol's wardrobe, but is she wearing two bras? 
is that a common thing? Do, do women do that? I don't wear bras. Anyways, Ralphie takes Carol to meet his family, which seems maybe rude? Like, maybe you should wait till Steve's there to introduce her. She asks them about raising a little person, and they give her this hollow bullshit answer. There'll be rough patches, there's no doubt about it. But that's what life is all about. Dealing with hardship. If a person can't deal with that, then they can't ever be happy. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, but so is life, man, so whatever. I think what Carol's thinking about is the medical aspects of the situation. Yeah, that's totally what I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's totally what I was thinking about. Have you been thinking about things? What is this shot? She's on the phone. Show her on the phone. Are, are you trying to hide something? Are you trying to imply there's something going on between her and Rolf? I mean, there is, just not yet. And after learning about her visit with his family and a party they've been invited to tomorrow, Steve gets angry and throws his phone into the woods. That was smart. That was smart. Thank you. You said these parties got a little wild. I never expected this. This party doesn't look that wild. Looks pretty respectable. That is loud. It doesn't seem that loud either. And weirdly, Steve invited two of his female trainees to the party? To, uh, make Carol jealous? To cause drama, okay? Every character in this movie's main motivation is to just cause more drama for the plot. Does it make sense? Is it in line with their characters? Who gives a shit? Drama. It's drama. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Also, Maurice is a Marxist who calls for the armed insurrection of little people. What you people don't understand is that political power, it grows out of the barrel of a gun. No, no. Sure. Little people revolution. Couldn't make this film any weirder. I am French! And I'm proud to be French! I am proud not to eat this disgusting swill! Oh, 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 I am the French! French, French, French! Oh, I want some escargot! Other than that, it's pretty normal. Rolf is dating the girl whose boyfriend beat him up now, I guess. Steve and Rolf get in a fight, there's drama between Steve and Carol, pretty typical stuff. Oh, and, uh, Sally, the girl whose boyfriend nearly beat up Rolf, is fucking another guy. Is this conflict? They- they don't seem that close. Just seems like he invited her to a party. Maybe he was hoping to get with her later, but that's a tad presumptuous, my dude. You're not exclusive. And then Steve and Carol talk about little people sex. Sally Corners. Rolf, and she screams at the top of her lungs. She says, Rolf Bedelia, you haven't fucked me in five months. <laughs> Rolf's sex life, Steve's sex life. Who wrote this fucking dialogue? Bill Wiener? Except no, it was written by Matthew Bright. Why would you consciously choose to use Wiener as your fake name? I guess so no one knows you wrote this shit? You know, the kids would come over, we'd sit in a circle, play doctor, and that kind of thing. Could have been more than 10 or 12, so that doesn't really count. Is that you had a circle trip with a bunch of little people? I would <laughs> love to see that. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't handle it, man. Tell me, Carol, what is it exactly you do for a living? I'm a painter. What? You mean, like, fine art? Uh-huh. Did you go to school? Yeah, to the New York School of Art and Design. You mean you make money at that? Uh, pays the bills. I love in this story of you should accept people even if they're different. Steve's mom is clearly not okay with Carol being an artist. Anyhow, Steve and Carol are having Carol's parents over to Steve's parents' house to talk about the wedding. And we get this shot of Ralph sitting on a stool that's clearly Gary Oldman just standing up. But Carol's mom has to address the elephant in the room. I certainly wouldn't want anyone to think that we're prejudiced people. Daddy! Because... All right, Kirk, you tell them. You're a lot more diplomatic than I am. Carol's grandfather is getting on in years. He's an Orthodox Jew, and he's never forgiven us for going reform. So unless you can bring yourself to have a Jewish wedding, would you at least consider a, a civil ceremony? Otherwise, we won't be able to invite him. Ha ha ha! Classic. 
Also, I guess Patricia and Maurice weren't invited to the wedding, because they're sitting across the park and watching, which is kind of a weird thing to do. Also, French Peter Dinklage has braids now. Oh, and Ralph went to the wedding with Sally, the girl who kinda maybe sorta cheated on him. Like, dude, stop. It's not happening between you two. Luckily, this is the last we see of her in the film. He's a very lucky guy. I just hope he's smart enough not to screw it up. He's not. Exactly one scene later, he's losing his shit because his child was born a little person. Like, what a twat. We're gonna jump from happy marriage to them getting upset with each other? She was pretty far along when they got married, so we're just watching this guy jeopardize his marriage maybe three months in. They do stick it out as the next scene is ten months later, so probably about a year of marriage before they split up. But yeah, Steve leaves his wife and their child with severe health complications. Steve is a very unsympathetic character. And Carol goes to live in a cabin with Rolf, Maurice, and Patricia. Meaning it is at least implied that Steve kicked them out of the house. Like, Jesus, dude. And yeah, movies can have bad characters, but it feels like they spent way too much time building Steve up as this nice, good character, only to make him a huge dick at the one-hour mark. And he's not alone, because they randomly decide to make Maurice super sexist, and Patricia breaks up with him. Although, he's never really been a good character, it's just something that feels out of nowhere. I could comment on how fake the baby looks, but let's be real, I've seen worse. And the ending of the movie is real weird. Ralph and Carol develop a sort of relationship in the final 20 minutes of the film, and some of that is in credits, so more like 15 minutes. Why? Why wouldn't you spend more time on this? I mean, I'm glad they didn't. It feels hilariously out of place. And it'd almost certainly be boring if they paced it out correctly. The ending feels so abrupt. It's like you're expecting 15 to 20 more minutes of film, but nope. They kiss and that's it. And that's Tiptoes, one of my absolute favorite bad movies. When you talk about the absolute worst of a genre, I think drama and romance have some of the best. It's easy to screw up horror, or comedy, or even kids' films, but drama and romance are so dry and repetitive, they tend to just be boring. A bad drama that isn't just boring has to do something spectacularly odd to break the mold. And spectacularly odd this movie is. Uh, like, replace dwarfism with any biological issue. Make it cancer. Make it HIV. Whatever. This movie would still be complete nonsense. But seeing Gary Oldman waddle around on his knees, surrounded by actual little people actors, just makes it so much more surreal. And my god, the pacing is indescribable. It's like nothing has a consistent flow to it. Every scene is the start of a new film. This is like a study in doing everything you possibly can wrong. What is this similar enough to that I could even plug at the end of this video? Uh, the video about Nil by Mouth? That's about Gary Oldman, right? Uh, maybe I could do Little Nicky? Little Nicky has Patricia Arquette in it. There's just nothing like tiptoes. Oh my god, Matt! Matt, we gotta get this door barricaded. The midget revolution is finally happening. Um, I believe they prefer the term little people. Dude, one of them shot me! Who cares what they prefer? 
didn't Bad the Bully already kill you, though? That was a different other Matt. How many other Matts are there? Enough. Ugh. Open up in there, you tall best held, under the order of me, Pete Held Dinklage. Ho 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 ho. Ah, shit. Uh, until next time, this is Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. kids come over, we'd sit in a circle, play doctor and that kind of thing. Could have been more than 10 or 12, so that doesn't really count. Is that you had a circle trip with a bunch of little people? I would <laughs> love to see that. Ah, Pete Held Dinklage, now declare myself supreme leader of the United States. Vive la petite revolution! Ho, ho, ho! This is gonna have pretty major ramifications on continuity of your universe. Nah, I'll retcon it out of existence by next episode.